Hello everybody, this is Francesco from Fattere di Montemaggio. As always, this is the Wine Thursday. This is a, a new episode which will be completely dedicated to a beautiful Q&A that we're going to have with Katarina Anderson. And we're going to speak about her, uh, of course, uh, profession. She's a sommelier, wine writer, wine judge. Uh, she's also doing lots of uh, different things uh, when it comes about the word of wine. So... Uh, it will be very interesting for uh, all the people that are curious about it to, of course, hear uh, her uh, answer. And uh, so we're going to give a couple of minutes to, to all the people to join us, and then we will start with the Q&A with uh, uh, Katarina. So uh, now, uh, anyway, just feel free to ask any question that you have for for her uh, if you of course um, uh, if you need uh, of course something if you want to if you want to ask something in particular just just do that and uh, of course we will be very happy to um, of course uh, answer to you she will be very very happy to, to answer to you um, let's so I think she's having she's going she's about to enter okay perfect She's about to answer. Okay, so anyway, I hope that everybody is doing fine, everybody is, uh, is okay, and of course that you're going to have a fantastic uh, Christmas time with your, with your families and friends. So, of course, I wish you all the best for this uh, um, Christmas time and then, of course, for the New Year's that is, uh, uh, that is coming. So I think Katarina is going to arrive. Let me just check. We were just probably having some problems with connection you know this is live that's the beautiful thing of uh, being being on a, on a live stream okay katarina is here there we go check kata hello kata can you hear hello. me hello can you can you do the other screen that is more uh so we, we're not yes of course to... let's wait that's there we go okay, that's better. wonderful thank you thank you so much for, for join, joining us um, again and it's i mean it's a pleasure for me to have you here and so it will be a very, very, very nice conversation, the one that we are uh, going to have. And uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, how are you? How's it going? I'm fine, and you? I'm, I just back, so I'm a bit <laughs> too. I'm sorry? No, I just got back from, uh, I was out this, this afternoon, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how are you? Everything was, uh, was, was fine. So, um, uh, anyway, so um, of course, um, um, if you want, we can we can start. I prefer some question for you that that I was, uh, of course, that I wanted to to ask you. So if you if you don't mind, I, I will I would like to start. So I guess like everyone else, of course, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 it's it's a busy time the the, the the holiday season. Do you have many projects at this moment in your uh, in your in your pipeline or? Is it more like laid back uh, time for you now? <laughs> no, there's a lot of work, and uh, but I don't really have a huge projects. But yeah, some some things are are still continuing, also even if it's holidays. But luckily, I can uh, I can schedule. So of course, I'm working with Montemaggio, like most people probably already know. <laughs> that yeah. Since several years, I'm kind of the together with you now, but also in the beginning I was on my own, the, the person behind the. The, the content and the social media. Uh, I also work with a couple of other wineries, smaller like Montemaggio, mm -hmm. and doing more or less the same thing. And then I also work with a Swedish importer now. Um, wow. But I basically write his uh, his content also, so I'm not really so far dealing with the <laughs> with the the. the the choice of the wines um but yeah it's very interesting and it also allows me to to uh, rediscover writing in in swedish i mean oh i don't write in in swedish since uh i mean for personal reasons yes but not for for work i don't write in swedish since a long time uh so that's interesting and uh, there are some mm -hmm. other projects coming up next year but 
we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited if you to also read uh, your, your 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 new articles and maybe try also to read the Swedish one. Also, I will not understand anything, but it will be very 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 interesting to to read some some of the things you write also. In, in know, did you present me before I came? Uh, yes, came yes, of course, of course, of course. I already explained everything. I was explaining about the fact, of course, you are um, sommelier, wine judge, wine writer, and I did a very small introduction of course uh, well I was um, well while well, you were also trying to, to, to enter so um, I would like uh, now of course um, to ask you something that of course uh, is related with the, with the beginning of your you know career with uh, with the word of wine so how did you come in, uh, into you know contact with the word of wine how, how everything started for you and uh, you know uh, also what it was the course of your study uh, um, so how uh, how you learned everything about wine do you would you like to also explain something more about it do you mind yes of course uh, well actually I mean I always liked wine even when I lived in Sweden I kind of uh, I was one of the the nerdy and strange ones so when other people would kind of because uh, you always have this this pre-parties in Sweden when you drink as much as you can to not spend anything when you're out at the disco and similar. So I would often bring wine. I think also because then I didn't drink as much uh, because uh, the main thing in those years were like, you know, to bring vodka or other kinds of spirits to, to, to mix. Um, but yeah, I think like it was about 10 years ago um, with a friend, we saw this uh, this ad for uh, sommelier course in the center uh, with Fizar. Uh, so we just kind of joined out of interest. We thought it would be a fun thing to to take one level or so and see how it how it uh, how it would go. And uh, then we liked it a lot, and it was really a nice group uh, because Fizar in that period was was growing, uh, and they were really kind of uh, taking advantage of creating creating community. Uh, kind of stimulating uh, the people and all of us to to kind of do tastings together, also outside the courses and, and you know, discover uh, wineries and they also organize kind of mini trips and, and uh, visits to wineries, also outside of, of the necessities of the course. So it was a very vibrant community and it, and it was growing constantly. Uh, so it was really a lot of fun, and uh, so we just continued, and uh, we did all the three levels, and we also did the exam. So then we were sommeliers, and uh, I didn't really, I mean, I'm not really interested in, in the more practical side of being a sommelier, and I would never work as a sommelier, but uh, I like the theoretical part. Uh, so I just kind of, while we did all these visits and, and tastings, I just started writing on a kind of a free blog in, in English, uh, kind of the experiences and what we were doing, what was happening. And I actually didn't think that anybody else than my friends were reading. Uh, but I did post it like on, on Facebook and, and Twitter. And Twitter was actually kind of, uh, how do you say, that turned everything around. It was crucial in, in, mm -hmm. in that area, area, era because, or the, in that period, because uh, that, that's where the people started writing me and contacted me and, and also, uh, saying that they were reading my articles and, and I met some people there, uh, mainly in the US, uh, who were in the kind of social media and marketing world, uh, who also liked wine, liked wine still. <laughs> um, and they just kind of explained a lot of things to me. So I kind of just uh, tried it out thinking like it's if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, uh, I mean, it's just a hobby. And then it just became something kind of like exploded. And, and in 2015, I started to do live streams because they also kind of uh, I wanted to do a Twitter chat because there was no Twitter chat so far about Italian wine, because okay. Twitter in Italy has never been really unless you're kind of uh, in the more corporate or, or business world. Otherwise, there's not that many people using Twitter mm -hmm. or even knowing how to use it, which I think is, uh, I wouldn't say that they don't use it. It's just that they don't know how to use it because yeah, they, they're more used I think, to Facebook and, and writing a lot of text and, and long messages uh, because it's a bit different. But uh, anyway, so um, Kind of, I was just advised to do live streaming instead. So I, there was a lot of these apps coming out in 2015 when live streaming was blowing up. So I started with Blab.im, which was the first 
live streaming app. It was a startup. It, I think it only lasted a year or so, but it was really cool because you got to know so much people and you could have these, these rooms uh, where people just kind of dropped in and dropped out. And there were so many people who were interested in that in that period. So you could have like a hundred people in your room. Uh, so I, I kind of got to know a lot of people in, the, in uh, with that. And then it just continued. And then it also kind of started here when I opened my, my own uh, website and blog uh, with my own name or domain name. And then it kind of just changed. And I also started kind of <laughs> becoming kind of also in, invited to, to events and tastings and, and also as a wine church. So it's just been growing and growing and then it just developed. So that's how it started. Yeah, that's that's really, really fascinating. And it's really, really great. I mean, I mean it's um, I mean, you made out from from your passion, you, you basically uh, develop your 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 job. And, you know, it, you, it seems like that you put, put together all your all of your different passions. So the passion for wine, the passion for writing, the passion for social media and so on, and the digital world in general. So, it, it, I mean, it's incredible and something that I personally really admire, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and uh, uh, so you had to be structured and you had to be consistent. And I think that's, that's what, you don't have to have like uh, 10 or 50 or 100,000 followers to make it. It's just, you mm -hmm. have to be very consistent and you have to be very, strategic about what you do and then sure. you have to follow that and i think i i learned that and i did that uh, i also think that i was in some sense i was lucky because i was in the beginning i was a bit before i'm not going to say that i was kind of you know this groundbreaker but i was lucky to follow kind of more internationally so i was uh, perhaps two years early uh, a bit more in Italy because when I started in Italy, nobody did this. So it was very more traditional things, and nobody would live stream. I mean, people would look at me very strangely when I went to, to a wine <laughs> event and just started live streaming because it wasn't what you do, what you did. It wasn't something you you would do. Um, so I just I just had this. I don't know if it's luck or if it was kind of you know to be in the right place in the right moment that I did things a bit before others. I think if I would start with the same now, I wouldn't make it because there's too many now who do the same mm -hmm. thing. So you just have to, I mean, it was just lucky to be in the beginning. Yeah, but I think it's also because of your hard work <laughs> and passion, absolutely. No, for sure. For sure. Yeah. It, took, it took several years to... to exactly. To yeah. it was really hard because, because I... I think also because I heard uh, some other, I talked to now last, recently this year, and I was like, oh, but how do you do it? And, you know, you have to grow and, and earn money straight away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, because you have to do that kind of groundwork, which takes a couple of years. If you want, sure. I think if you want to grow consistently, if you want to grow like, you know, by followers or somehow use these kind of, of strategies to grow very fast, you can do that. But I think if you don't have a, an idea or a strategy behind it all, it's not going to last because if you don't stop, it's just going to fall everything. Well, yeah. now I can take it a bit more easy because I kind of did so many things for, for a couple of years uh, that it kind of lasts now. I don't have to be as, as, you know, as obsessed about everything or do it as, as uh, I mean, I can, I can, st I still have to do it consistently, but I, I can take it a bit more easy. And I think that's also thanks to, to kind of being very, very focused in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, you were also saying that you started with FISA, right? Uh, you, you started with FISA. So um, for people that don't know, um, FISA is the uh, Federazione Italiana Sommelier Albergatori Ristoratori, which is basically an association, right? It's a confederation of, uh, I would say, uh, sommelier. And they are offering also, you know, high quality uh uh you know um, um of course uh, high quality um formation for for, for 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 i mean they they form new sommelier they form new new professional about wine and and well, basically it's the same eyes and fees are, are just the same it's just yes internally they are kind of wanting to say that they're different but they do exactly the same thing it's just that eyes uh, was you know it's the older association so they, they yes they, yes it's the only one existing and it's a bit yeah. more male dominated in, in eyes too i think 
or it used to be. They're a bit more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of noticed the same kind of thing. I mean, I've. I, I, I was uh, is male dominated too, but I mean, I think the last ten years it, they've grown a lot, and, and they mm -hmm. also had the first uh, female uh, president. Yes, yeah. Uh, even if if it then didn't work out, because but I mean I, I think they kind of tried a bit more. I think ICE the last few years is trying more to be more open minded, a little bit younger. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically they do the same thing. It's just yes. that they're they divided at a certain point. I think they kind of absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so the next question I I wanted actually also to to, to ask you it was about Montemagio. We, we I mean I also mentioned uh, the fact that you are of course working uh, um, with Montemagio since at this point a long time I would say uh, in, in the interaction also you said later uh, when you when you uh, when you joined the live stream that of course you're you're working with uh, with us and uh, I wanted to ask you how did you uh, you know uh, get in contact with Montemaggio and how did you met uh, Valeria? Uh, would, you, would you like to also tell us yeah, more about right. it? Uh, well, I mean, it was in that period when I was, I said I was live streaming, I was starting with that and I was kind mm -hmm. of focused on with all my strategies and I was going through a lot of tastings. Um, and I already had met Ilaria at, at several tastings, also oh, because okay. a friend of mine knew her before me because I think she had visited Montemaggio before me in 2015 or something. Um, and then I think it was in early 2016, I had already had Ilaria on my live stream, I think in early 16, 2016. Mm -hmm. I don't remember well anything like that. And I just saw an ad in one of these, um, always these American or uh, I think there is a US based, uh, how do you say, platform where you can uh, advertise for uh, online jobs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I saw uh, an ad about a winery looking for some someone to help them with content and social media in uh, in uh, Chianti Classico. Mm -hmm. So I just replied, but I actually didn't know that it was Montemagio. <laughs> so then uh, I think it was, I think she wrote me back and then Ilaria called me saying it was Valeria. So then we got to know each other. Mm -hmm. and, um, that's how it started. So we just met and then um, Valeria explained what she wanted. And uh, then I think I said what I could do. Uh, so I think it was like in the spring or early summer in 2016 that I, I started. Um, and then it's just continued and grown. And I, I'm really happy because I, I think the Montemagio is really one of those uh, small wineries who has made it without you know, paying to get, you know, followers or paying to get ads or paying to get, and I think it also shows it, it took a bit of time. It took like two, almost three years before it gets going. But now, I mean, I think I see that, that there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of people following and liking and also kind of, you know, connecting and uh, also connecting to, to go on wine tours or ask about the wines where they can buy them. And uh, that's in the end what you want, you know, that, that it mm -hmm. goes, it's a bit like I explained before that you have to work really hard in the first two, three years, but then it starts, you know, becoming automatic. So people reach out on their own. You don't have to to chase them, but they, they chase you instead. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Of course, if you if you of course plan and if you if you work in a very you know uh, solid way in the beginning, then of course everything. Yeah, it's it, it's. But then I mean, I also I also think that in uh, in a parallel way in these these years, the, the wine tours uh, activity at Montemagio has developed a lot too, um, and I think also now it's even if now it's it's hard because there's still a pandemic <laughs> going on. So yes. Uh, but I think if it wasn't a pandemic, it would have exploded, I think, because, um, I mean, from going to, they started out and then they tested and then they had this, I think, uh, tour operator and then that didn't work or they, they chose not to do it anymore. It wasn't that it didn't work, but um, I think Montemagio chose to, to yeah, set it up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To have different mm -hmm. offers. Yeah. Also with the help of you and, and Eduardo and Ilaria to, to offer more 
yeah tailor made yes. uh, offers and i think in the end that's that's also what uh, what made it work yeah probably also you know i mean we are we are in montemagio we are all very passionate about you know um share with the other people the love that we have for wine and for wine making and also being in some way like some wine educator you know and that's the reason why we, we started to do what we're doing uh, every day at this point i mean now yes it's a pandemic going on but we were capable anyway to to to, to meet a lot of people and uh you know we are very proud of the of, of this connection that also we are yeah. very no, but I mean, that combined with actually also sharing it uh, beyond what you do at Montemaggio because of course you can educate people who arrive there but if you don't tell them to share it on uh, exactly, exactly. Afterwards, and also uh, tell who they know about their experiences and, and we also or Montemaggio with uh, my help and your help uh, resharing everything yeah uh, of course it wouldn't work because i mean i see wineries who, who do tours but they might not tell anyone about it and then you know it doesn't work because people don't get to know about you they're not going to yeah to, also, yeah. to, to tell others about their experiences so. yeah Abs uh, absolutely yeah of course if you don't uh anyway try to maintain also like a constant connection with people and at certain point you can, you can get a little bit um, and there, I think, I think Valeria is crucial there because uh, absolutely. she was open-minded and she wanted new stuff because um, in that period, I mean, I wouldn't say I was crazy, but I like to try new things and I always suggested new things to try and, and in, uh, she almost always liked them or, if, you know, we always find found some way where we uh, then agreed upon, up, up thing, upon things to do, but she was she's always uh, interested in trying new things and, and seeing, uh, you know, how far it can go and then how you can, and then if it doesn't work, uh, you know, uh, we change and we try something new. And I think that's also important because um, if you don't try, you will never know if it works. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and, uh, she, she's she's crucial in, uh, also in this because she's crucial in general, of course. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she was. No, but I mean, it, it's important when, when you have the owner uh, herself, yes. herself who believes, uh, you know, in, in doing something new and doing something more innovative. And I think uh, she was like the, the top of mind there and, and she still is. So that's. That's the important thing. Yeah, absolutely. So always, I mean, one should always <laughs> try some things, absolutely. So I wanted also to ask you something more about this sommelier thing and how uh, much it was, uh, I mean, uh, how uh, this kind of, uh, you know, profession evolved lately, you know, I mean, and also I wanted also to ask you uh, at the same time, uh, something more about you, the profession your profession of wine writer how did you think i mean you already kind of explained that a bit but i wanted to go a bit deeper in this kind of uh, argument yeah uh so the sommelier i think uh, as a sommelier from the more theoretical side it's it's it has developed but it's also developing every day because when i was i had my diploma but i can't say that you know that much i mean you know on the paper uh, but then you know if if you wouldn't practice it, you would forget quite soon. And I can also say I, I didn't understand all the things and I, I didn't have the, the palate as trained, obviously, because you have to taste a lot to, to do that. Uh, so the last, I think, eight, nine years, uh, all this this uh, exercise in tasting, meeting people, also listening. I mean, I'm, I'm always trying to listen when I'm out to, to what other people say, their opinions, uh, also more experienced people than me, to understand and always learn new things. I, I think that's also important. And of course, I taste a lot of wine, which makes me also, it makes you kind of more experienced year for year. And, and, uh, and uh, for wine writing, I think it developed uh, in the same way because uh, so I'm, of course, I have my PhD and my 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 background as a historian. So I always like to tell a story. But uh, in the beginning, of course, it was a blog where I mostly wrote. Uh, you know, it's it's more personally, right? You know, I was there, I was here, I was tasting. Mm -hmm. um, I always was a bit more that I tried to tell a story about the winery, not necessarily do tasting notes or, or score wines because I'm not really that interested in that. I think it's a bit. 
old school, but I understand that people need to do that too. Um, but I think the more I, I tasted, the more people I knew also on an international level, because I, I always focused on more internationally. So mm -hmm. basically I got to know more people in the US, UK, Europe in general. Uh, lately also more in Sweden, but um, since Sweden, I wasn't really, when I, when I lived in Sweden, I wasn't into wine. So my, my connections there were not in the wine world. So it was a bit more difficult. Um, also, I didn't, I don't live there anymore. And I, I don't write mainly in, in Swedish. I write in English. So it took a bit longer time to, to get the, the connections there, uh, back, which is a bit bizarre, yes. but it is like that. I had to kind of. Uh, work my, my way up to, to credibility also in Sweden. <laughs> but since I had all my contacts abroad and also, you know, getting to know them at different events when they were here or, if, you know, uh, or if they came to Tuscany, sometimes I also brought them to Montemaggio and, and a lot of them have become friends by now. So, um, and you see what they do, how, you know, some of them are more kind of well-known uh, journalists, uh, wine journalists. and. So I think um, kind of connecting, experiencing and, and talking to people, you evolve as a writer too, and, and you read more and you see, you know, how you want to write, how you want to be. So I think uh, for me, I think I've developed a lot. Um, uh, and I think also I'm, I'm not, I, I, I say wine right, right now, I don't say wine blogger, but not because I don't want to uh, think that wine blogger is something less. I just think that, that the wine blogger is more, talking more in, in uh, you know, in a singular, is a singular like uh, from a personal point of view. Uh, well, I think I have stepped, moved forward and trying to tell a story in a more general way. Of course, I, I talk a bit about, you know, where I've been and what I've done. Uh, but I think I've, I've tried to, to, to raise it a level so it can be more general and interesting for a broader audience. Mm -hmm. uh, it could still be, but I, I think um, I want to not to become more professional, but to become more kind of uh, raise the bar a bit about what I what I what stories I tell, and I think that's that could also be important for the wineries or for the wine world in general here in Italy to tell that story abroad uh, from from that point of view and not only from my my own point of view. So. I don't know if yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, it totally makes sense. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, of course, uh, being able to communicate something to a larger uh, audience in the most clear way as possible. I would say, right? So, that, so not just like your personal uh, perception about something, but yeah. you know, the reality of fact. You know, yeah. about that specific. Well, I mean, that is also about you know learning models and, and changing models. It's like when I when I studied history, you you, you learn about uh, theoretical theoretical paradigms and theories and models, uh, and it's just you know you you see some you read something and you see how somebody else uh, do it, or you see different uh, ways of, of of models of doing it, and then you try to to not to replicate, but to try to 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 take it and make it into your uh, own version i think <laughs> and that's yeah. also developing so. yeah Ab absolutely yeah to implement yourself by you know acquiring new knowledge uh, yeah. and yeah that that's a, that's absolutely fundamental and um so now i would like also to ask you something that again we already uh, touched this 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 argument but i wanted to go a bit deeper um, so how much is important nowadays this kind of digital transformation for, in general, the food and wine world, you know, not only for wine, but in general, also for food, how much is important to be uh, competent and how much is important to be involved more and more in into the digital communication, you know, we, we already mentioned before the, the wine, the wine tours, for example, and uh, why is also important to share what we're doing during wine tours also online and internet. So it's a it's a it's a bridge. It's a way of connection with, with people. And 
what what is your i mean of, obviously you 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 realize that uh, even earlier in you know in in uh, uh, in the process even before that was uh, like an actual thing for 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 italy and what i mean how i mean what what's this changing that that you are also capable to see now compared to you know when you started Uh, I think when I started, there were very few who would have somebody helping them with, with social media or with content. Uh, I think there's still very few if you're not a mid-sized or larger winery, because uh, I think, um, or they think they don't have money to invest, or they think it's going to be very expensive, uh, mm -hmm. or they invest with someone. I mean, there's a lot of, I, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm, you know, <laughs> The, the best uh, or you know knowing better than anybody else um, I'm just talking about my experience and I think mm -hmm. you have to be careful when you choose also because I mean who is going to help you because it's not only to know how to do Instagram or social media uh, I think um, of course there's there are people who are much better than me to grow on on Instagram you know fast or on, on Facebook or whatever. But I think you also have to have kind of an idea behind it and mm -hmm. some sort of strategy, uh, which I think is not only to be a wine lover or a sommelier <laughs> gives you that, that knowledge. But um, I think it's very important today. And I think during the pandemic, it, it has shown that it's more important than ever. Then I think it, there has become a bit of an overload during the last two years in the pandemic. <laughs> Of, of videos, uh, social media, because of course we were all at home and we didn't know what to do. Um, but I think also for smaller wineries, I think a lot of wineries today are very good at you know doing it. I think there's still a lot of work to do because, as I said, I don't think it's just you know go in and be really super good on, on one channel. I think a bit like Montemaggio has done, trying to to have a more, more uh, overarching idea, a vision, and trying to implement it in small steps. Uh, but having, so it, it reaches not only a social media channel, but it reaches beyond. I don't know if you agree, it reaches beyond to you who work mm -hmm. every day in the winery with, with telling the story and, and doing wine tours and, and tastings and, and also the people working in the vineyard. Uh, it also takes like a commitment to actually be interesting and you know trying to understand what what how you want to use that knowledge and, and information and how you want to sp to spread it. Um, yeah, absolutely, totally agree with you. I think um, also smaller wineries can do this. You can choose one or two channels. You don't have to use every channel on social media because that's the hard work. Um, now at Montemaggio, I mean, because, you know, we are several people helping each other, so it's, uh, it's possible to, to do a lot of things. Absolutely. But it's also taken several, several years to reach uh, this level of, of doing a lot of things, I think. Uh, but that's also, you know, trying, Valeria trying me, trying things to, to, to do and see how it works and then to, to develop from there. But I, I think for a small winery, It's a necessity. It's a necessity to tell your story and, and have an idea how you want to tell your story. I think also it is good to if if you're not like really kind of digital savvy like Valeria or like uh, Lorenzo at Montefiorale who has his own uh, web agency, which is another winery I help, who is is really really good. I mean, on the technical side, he's is really good. Um, I think it's it's a good idea. It, it it's not really that expensive to invest in one person who helps you, who helps you. Uh, you don't have to have a PR agency or a, or a huge um, kind of agency. Uh, of course, it helps, but I, I don't think there's a big point in having that if if sure. if you're not a mid-sized <laughs> large winery because it's a lot of money to to spend. Um, I think also to have just a press office is not enough today. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I don't know what you think. I mean, a press office, I think it's good because, of course, 
a press office or someone who works with that is a person with a lot of connections in the traditional journalist world. But a lot of other people have those connections today too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think uh, if you do that, you have to kind of collaborate with someone who is, is good at other things like the digital side. And a lot of people do that today and they're really, really good. Um, but I, I wouldn't hire only a, a, an official staff or a, a press office unless I was really, really sure that they know how to exactly. implement side too. Because a lot of people say they do the digital side, but it's not that easy, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I don't do uh, official stamp because I mean I'm it's you know I know a lot of people but I'm not uh, traditionally schooled in that way to do official stamp so I, I wouldn't dare to say that I do official stamp because I uh, I would more say that I'm a content writer and I, I do the digital side which I, I know a lot of other people do because I think it's it's also good to be honest because if I don't know how to do something I don't want to sell myself doing that and I, I think if you choose a person you have to be a bit careful there to actually ask them what they do and what they can do for you well with this I'm not saying that you know that that people don't know what they do but, but I think sometimes you want to do all of it to get yeah but you, yeah and you need to, to be yeah. perform afterwards mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> absolutely no. so <laughs> yeah yeah no, no no i mean i totally i totally i totally agree with what you said so uh thank you so much it was really 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 nice to have this little chat with you i would like to ask you the two last questions the first is the, of course uh about your, the uh, you, you said, of course, you're not originally from Italy, you are from uh, Sweden. So I wanted to ask you some tradition, some Swedish tradition when it comes about Christmas time. Of course, we're, it's, it's Christmas time finally. And I wanted to ask you if you have some specific tradition. And the second question uh, is uh, what, uh, which is the wine uh, uh, that, you, that you would like to recommend for Christmas when it comes, to, when it comes about the Montemagos wine? So what kind of wine would you recommend? Uh, yeah, I'm from Sweden, so Christmas is very big in Sweden. It's uh, it's something very kind of, it's a huge tradition. It's a huge holiday, probably the the biggest uh, in uh, during the year. I think Easter might be bigger here in Italy, but in in Sweden, Christmas is the together with the midsummer, but Christmas is big. So we do. I mean, we have to have a Christmas tree and a real Christmas tree, not a fake one. <laughs> And uh, then we have um, this kind of, uh, there's a lot of, of typical dishes uh, that comes from the old uh, kind of agricultural or rural world. Um, I think one uh, which is very particular is this kind of, it's called the temptation of Jansson, which would be Jansson's festuses. So it's basically, uh, you put layers of, of uh, sliced potatoes uh anchovies not the salty one in oil but the other anchovies which is a bit milder uh onion uh cream and uh salt and pepper and then you put it in the oven uh mm -hmm. it's ready for an hour or so uh which is a very salty i mean it's a poor man's dish but it's it's very particular and uh, i like it <laughs> sometimes i make it here <laughs> just to see if, if people will like it yeah, it sounds really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, not everybody likes it because it, it is a bit particular, but it, it, it becomes nice. So for the wine, I always like the, uh, for Christmas, I always like the Montemaggio Riservo or the, the Torre di Montemaggio because there's a bit more full-bodied red wines. Uh, no. But I think also the, the the more recent Cielo di Montemaggio, the, the sparkling wine is probably nice to have as an aperitivo. Yeah. Or... Absolutely, also if you want to toast with your with your friends and family yeah. and so on. Uh, but yeah, I also agree with you. Maybe Reserva or the Torre, which is a Merlot, especially you know, yeah. it's winter time on the table we have usually very um, important kind of food. I would say you know very. Um, Important kind of food, so those kind of bigger wines are probably the. the, the, the so in, in Sweden, you have a lot of herring and, and uh, salmon uh, starters. So then, of course, I think the cello, the, the chardonnay oh, sparkling really? wine is better, yeah. uh, or perhaps the, the chardonnay white wine. 
yeah. but for the the more meat uh, part with the on the christmas table i think the, the red wines are better so well absolutely yeah. <laughs> thank you so much katarina uh, absolutely it was a pleasure oh, thank you it was it was fun uh, it was very fun yeah absolutely yeah. so whenever of course you want to come back uh, to, to talk of course uh, and join me in the london live stream it would be um, a very a real pleasure for me and uh, i wish you of course the, the merry christmas and i wish of course to everybody um, that is watching now and that will watch of course the replay merry christmas and i hope everybody is doing well and everybody's safe so thank you so no, much again. Merry Christmas to you and to everyone to Valeria yeah, and to Ilaria and to, to everyone uh, also uh, abroad and uh, everywhere so I hope to see you soon after the holidays me too and maybe also to meet each other in, uh, in real life in Monte Maggio because it's I think it's been a couple of years that we were not mm, uh, meeting yeah, I, think I, I was there last year no early this year in the spring but you were not there i think no no no, no. <laughs> and since no perhaps it was last year i can't remember actually um with this uh covid stuff it hasn't yes. been as, well as usual so yeah, absolutely it's uh even i mean uh when i look back to the to this let's say year and a half uh, it's doesn't doesn't seem like the times pass you know it's, it's, no, it's sound like 2019 for yeah. some kind of reason for me so thank you so much okay. again thank you so much to everybody and see you next time ciao, ciao. 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 thank you